Hello, everybody, um, and welcome. So my name is Wojciech, and what I'm going to be talking about today is how we managed to package up uh, Unreal Engine uh, using Oracle Kubernetes um, and essentially deliver interactive gaming over the WebRTC protocol. Right, didn't work. So a little bit about me. So I'm family man uh, with a keen interest in 3D uh, and been a sort of co-founder of an internal community at Oracle called 3D Labs. So agenda for today. Um, so what we're going to look at is um, I'm going to give you a little bit of a context around the things that um, we do at Oracle with uh, with the 3D. Then I'm going to follow it up with uh, the pixel streaming demo, and then we're going to deep dive into the setup and uh, and follow that up with some use cases and next steps. Right. Hi. So 3D at Oracle, and I guess you are wondering, like, um, you know, why we're we looking at this and why it's important. I think, um, from my perspective, as human beings, right, we first thing we do, we you know, explore through playing with toys, right? Um, so um, you know, play becomes eventually uh, more sophisticated as we progress through the years. But um, overall, we, what we do is play to understand and learn about the world around us. Sometimes we have the ups and downs, I guess. Uh, but, um, but yeah, the main thing remains and that um, is the doing to understand the world, right? I can assure you that no children were harmed during making this presentation, so uh, they're all fine. Um, and um, what our, at Oracle, what um, we also believe is that the future experiences, whether it's using augmented or, um, or virtual reality, will emphasize the doing in a simulated or virtual way. So therefore, what we try to kind of understand is what is the role um, of Oracle in this? And uh, you probably think of Oracles as guys in suits and all that stuff, but uh, it's changing. Um, because what we do is like we kind of segmented the market in terms of, okay, there's the 3D content creators, right? The people that deliver the, the, the polished games or, uh, or immersive experiences. Um, and I guess our role is not to be that, right? Um, and then on the other side of the spectrum, um, we have the, all the 3D hardware providers. So, you know, the chip makers, the people that create the, the GPUs and, um, and phones and headsets. However, Oracle um, value that it can bring is twofold. So we have a, our software as a service application business where we can deliver business value to the users uh, you know, through the integration, through things like the HR services or learnings and so on. And then on the other side, we have the whole raft of data and uh, infrastructure services which are uh, you know, capable of hosting things um, within the cloud and process workloads. So what we set ourselves on in terms of some of the tactics as a community internally is that um, we apply the principles of learn by doing. So we try to build prototypes and, and, uh, and various MVPs. And essentially through that, uh, what we want to do is create some sort of um, you know, quick starts, hands-on labs, or so um, any type of things that can help you know, 3D community to build a better solutions. So part of why am I here, you know, it's, it's, it's one of those things. And then we also look at the alliances. We look at the different companies that are in the market that, uh, you know, deliver content and deliver, um, you know, solutions that can help uh, in terms of creation of um, immersive experiences. So one of those is obviously an Unreal Engine. So to those of you that don't know what it is, um, it's, a, it's a company owned by Epic Games. Um, it's a game development engine, um, even though there is a game in the development engine in the category, you know, the, the, actually it spans multitude of various use cases. So starting from industries like film and CGI, architecture, automotive, manufacturing and simulations. And what they recently re released is this component or plugin called Pixel Streaming. And what that actually does, it allows you to actually 
you know, render and execute the uh, Unreal Engine in a cloud using GPU. And how it works, it's essentially, it's almost like a media stream that, uh, that is encoded and, uh, and rendered in real time. And uh, the difference is obviously it is allowing for the user inputs, right? So you can actually use your keyboard or mouse or any other custom uh, you know, application and so on and essentially interact with the experience to create it your own. So, um, so that allows you to, for this kind of um, two-way com co uh, communication. And um, so what it uses, it uses the protocol to WebRTC, and essentially it's, um, it's a framework that allows to achieve the lowest possible latency between the Unreal Engine and the, and, and, and the user. So um, the beauty of that approach is obviously it avoids any kind of big binaries or executable files, and there's no dependency on the hardware itself because all the computation actually happens in, in the cloud. And therefore, you know, any modern browser that is, um, is capable of using the WebRTC in processing the data, meaning that um, you know, every, we can pretty much access it wherever, wherever you want it. So I have a little demo now. It's, um, it's using the, the pre-packaged um, Unreal assets, um, but just to kind of show you what, uh, what I'm talking about. Um, let me just bring it up. Depends on the network. There we go. So, um, so this is purely running in a cloud. This is an Unreal application that is, um, you know, rendering in uh, in the real time. Um, the controls in this case, because it's kind of like Hello World demo that is uh, delivered by uh, by Unreal itself, um, is relatively basic. So all I get to do in this instance is is to control essentially the camera uh, within this scene, right? So. Um, so I can zoom in and zoom out um, uh, into this experience and kind of control uh, what I can do. But as you can see, everything is uh, in a, using high fidelity um, renders, so it's, uh, um, it's, it, it is pr pretty high quality itself. So the thing that you can also um, do within taking this approach is that um, you can actually um, uh, there is the part of the package that Unreal released. There is the actual um, wrapper that allows you to to use it as a web player, right? So now I kind of um, uh, I can interact with the experience with the scene that you just saw by actually changing it uh, through the browser. So this is kind of it comes out of the box. It is just the JavaScript that uh, essentially communicates between the uh, the Unreal experience and and, uh, and the web player. So I can actually change the character, I can control the scene, um, change the skin of the character, and, and the environment. And all of that is being rendered in real time, um, you know, allowing me to actually create the experience that I want, right? There's a few other things that Unreal released, like changing some resolution and, and frame rate and and so on, but um, but yeah, that's just kind of. Um, but all of this that you see, it's running in the, in the containers. It's running with the on the Linux um, GPU, uh, and uh, and then yeah, it allows you to to pay, pay pretty much access it from any device. All right, so what I'm going to do, I'm going to give you now a little bit uh, of a deep dive in terms of each of the components of this. So um, with regards to the building blocks, um, so as I mentioned, um, it's running uh, using Linux GPU because um, essentially what happened is that um, this uh, sample, or pro, uh, pixel streaming as a, as a plugin was released um, a couple of years ago, but uh, the only way to run it, you had to run it in the, on the Windows-based machine, 
um, which um, in our opinion was not the very um, practical and we had some challenges in terms of making sort of production ready. But uh, in August last year, Unreal released uh, with the release of the engine 4.27, essentially what they did is they, they brought the support of the Linux GPU. And better still, they released and published the images for building um, runtime containers. So with support for Linux-based containers, we're able to kind of rethink this in a more kind of microservices um, type of deployment. So hence, you know, we took that as a more realistic approach for the Kubernetes. So um, with all that said, the, you know, the building blocks that you can see here is um, the Unreal side uh, is the only unique thing about it, right? Because the game is designed and developed to address any functional needs of your users, whether it's entertainment or processing, um, you know, visualization of the data. But everything else that you can see on this slide is um, essentially agnostic and static to the, to the experience. So these are wrappers and enablers of the pixel streaming. So a couple of key components you have, which is the, um, apart from the Unreal, is the stun and turn server, which essentially allows um, offering the interactive connectivity establishment. And, and by the way, this, you know, all of this we kind of took straight from the Unreal terminology. Um, and, uh, and then you have uh, a signal, signal server, which is essentially doing the peer registration. Essentially, this is where one player comes in and says, hey, I want to play. Um, you know, find me, find me a, a streamer. And then you have a matchmaker who plays the role of the broker because if there are several streams available and several players, it essentially uh, performs this aggregation that, um, that makes the decision which player, you know, user goes where. And finally, the web server. So you saw, um, you know, the, this is essentially the JavaScript that allowed me to interact with the scene itself uh, to change you know, the individual components of it. So, as I mentioned earlier, so it all kind of uh, is enabled because of the uh, WebRTC, which is um, an open source project that um, originally started at Google. Um, and essentially what it provides is this kind of real-time communication capabilities in web application. And it has actually a variety of use cases um, spanning across the different industries, and it's not proprietary to the 3D technologies. Um, and you know, you can see it across in various chat systems, surveillance, IoT, and uh, autonomous driving systems. In a nutshell, it is uh, like um, a real-time pairing technology. And it, what it does, it uses this kind of four-way four handshake where um, essentially, it's established connections between streamer and server. So first, both peers use a stream register with the signal server. And essentially here, where, where Matchmaker would come in to say, okay, you know, once I can see two users and let's, uh, you know, attach user to the, to the server. Then signal server gives uh, them both connection details and then um, the network and firewall traversal methods are determined, uh, and that is done by a stand and turn server. And then the result of that is the interactive connectivity establishment details, uh, so that streamer and user are using those to connect one to another. And then finally, the transport layer is established in step four, which is essentially where the streamer and, and, um, and, and, and the client connect to, to each other. So we took the original construct of that um, pixel streaming project, and then we essentially added some extensions and kind of redesigned it for the Kubernetes. So at a high level, essentially, this is the architecture of the Kubernetes um, that, we, um, that we designed and built. Um, and essentially, it is split into the three distinct node pools. So on the left-hand side, you have the um, the turn pool, which is you know using the public subnet, and essentially each of the nodes uh, get the public IP and can post through you know turn pods. That allows each of the turn services to control network ports 
and things that are necessarily in creating an IC connection. Next, on the right-hand side, um, if you look, um, you have the, the GPU node pool. So that is essentially where you know, all the processing happens and, um, and you know, the, the, the GPU nodes and, um, and then the signal container is used as a, as a sidecar for that. And then in the middle, the, the general pool is essentially you know, all the other familiar uh, services that are coming from the, um, uh, from the Unreal. And that's Prometheus, ingress controllers, and all kind of service-related um, components. Uh, there is the web player that sits there as well. But what we also added uh, to it is this kind of proxy layer that, um, that allows you for the interactivity with, with each of the streams, if you may seem uh, that as uh, relevant for your use case. Right, easy as that, right? Um, so in terms of the overall use cases that we see this is being relevant to, um, you know, the role of data in this is um, it's significant. Um, and what it allows you to, to do is actually build some um, immersive visualizations that, um, you know, where you can consume and discover insight um, if you may wish to. I think um, everybody loves a bit of the minority report analytics type of uh, use case. Um, but um, but for me, more interesting thing is um, is actually the analytics they can get out of it in terms of you know understanding of how people interact with the experience and what they do with it, as well as you know exposing the data to um, to to get some more visualizations. There's obviously the 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 appl applicability of pixel streaming and IoT example. Um, you know this is where is a little bit more interesting, in my opinion, because what you get is this kind of blend of the real world and virtual world, where you can, you know, send the, the data in real time, and then get, um, you know, some really interesting ways to analyze it in terms of simulations or uh, some sort of proactive notifications and and decision making, right? So. Um, as you can see, this is some of the front ends that have uh, been designed and developed um, uh, across, and um, there are some quite interesting ways of how you can actually visualize that data itself. So another possibility, um, and this is kind of leveraging some of our software as a service um, components, um, is that you know building and using pixel streaming as um, either you know sales and marketing type of uh, tools? So we're seeing there's a lot of different sort of um, 3D malls or 3D um, you know shopping experiences that are being created. So um, there's quite a few of them happening now in the automotive industry where you can actually configure your car and kind of see how it looks like uh, uh, using the 3D engines like Unreal. And again, kind of the, the insights that you can extract from that in terms of what is the customer slash consumer looking at that are quite rich. So then, you know, you can surface that for the, you know, the, the sales, uh, uh, car salespeople and, and give them a, a sort of indication of what are the things that the, the user was looking at and what are the things that he was considering, whether it's, you know, the different type of paint or, um, or, 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 or trim on the wheels and so on. And I guess the other side where is you know, quite um, an interesting to explore is the whole kind of element of the training and using you know, pixel streaming like solutions for, to enable onboarding or whether you know, it's training itself in terms of simulating the, the some pretty severe examples of, um, of um, you know, situations. Again, kind of linking back to the land by doing, people believe that uh, VR is the closest to doing that um, you ever get, right? And then there's all sorts of uh, whole sorts of uh, things with regards to the learning in itself. So you know, e-learning platforms and and things that can you know create a classroom environment, or can be run sort of through the cloud and um, and using pixel streaming technology. Right, so with regards to the next steps, um, so 
as Oracle, we invest in more and more into the open source. So, um, so we embracing the communities. We, you know, making sure we contributing to open source projects. Um, we also making it easier to use open source um, with our um, uh, solutions. So, one of the examples is that we recently actually joined the Blender uh, Development Fund uh, because we believe that you know. Uh, helping this community to drive forward to create uh, new experiences and express uh, through actually free software like Blender is important and, uh, and we're trying to you know, see what are the things that we can deliver in that area too. There's, there's a lot of different resources available that we, we are publishing from the open source perspective. So um, through on the GitHub or um, you know, directly on the open source at Oracle or Developer Resource Center, you can also find a whole bunch of stuff that's quite useful. And then what we actually have is all of the things that I presented today is uh, available as part of our quick start project on GitHub. So you can actually, you know, deploy it if you want to um, using, using the, the GitHub. So let me just quickly give you a run through. Oh, actually before that. So yes, yeah, so like I said, a lot of the kind of key construct we took directly from Andrew because we wanted to kind of create this uh, um, a cohesive story between the two um, in terms of the naming convention and kind of how, uh, how it can be deployed uh, if you wanted to try it. So there is a whole documentation that you can find uh, regarding the pixel streaming itself and how it works and, and um, you know, key consideration with regards to the signaling and web servers and, and so on. But as I mentioned, we have released, uh, so as part of the, the quick start um, on our GitHub, you can, you can find this project and deploy it in your own environment if you may wish. So there's much more kind of, um, you know, much more details in terms of how each of the components and services work and what they stand for. And then there is um, some other resources that you can find with regards to, you know, how this actually came about and so on. And then there's the whole deploy section which literally lists out, you know, the, everything that we've done and, and how you can, you know, re, reproduce it in your own environment. Or if you want to just trial it out, that's fine. So it gives you the full kind of breakdown of how to go about it. What are the, each of the components? You know, what is the turn service and what is the, you know, the, the node composition? And, and then it goes into the whole kind of setup in terms of how you need to create your you know, ingress rules and, and so on. And, um, you know, there's the whole bunch of stuff that you can, you can find there. Right, I think that's um, pretty much um, most from me done. I don't know if there's any questions. So uh, one concern you always have with these things is the sort of round trip time between the device and the cloud. So what are you seeing in that ex aspect? Sorry. The, the round trip time. So from where you click a button on your phone or something like that until you see the updated picture coming back. How is the performance in that? Yeah, so we tested that um, a few times. I mean, we've de done it uh, across different kind of applications. Um, it, it depends. Um, sometimes, you know, it obviously you need to take into consideration how you set up your node pools and, and you know, where your uh, data center is. But, um, but it, I mean, yeah, today probably it was a little bit of delay because of the network, um, but, um, you know, stable, environment it it provides pretty pretty near time real time responses so it's uh, 
yeah, it's definitely some consideration that with regards to even using it on the go. It's like if you want to actually use some sort of 5G connection, you know, how would that work? So there is, I think there's still a little bit of work overall in terms of infrastructure that, um, you know, can sort of make this a little bit more applicable. I think it is relatively, um, you know, cutting edge at this stage in terms of, you know, the things that uh, that uh, being hosted and, and, and done. So I think, um, I mean, if you consider some of the, you know, people like John Cormack, for example, he believes that uh, the future of the VR devices is going to be remote um, uh, rendering. It's going to be the only thing that delivers the kind of triple A type of experiences. So I think as we, you know, advance with some of the infrastructure with regards to the time and the response, I think they're going to be better. But so far, we've um, we had a pretty good um, near real time responses. Any more? Sorry, did that answer your question? So, yeah, you, you more than answered. Oh, sorry. Okay. I think that's it. No more. more. Okay. Well, we are here at the booth if you, anybody wants to have more sort of information with regards to, you know, what, um, how to deploy it and what are the kind of compositions of the nodes or, uh, you know, what sort of uh, GPU you should consider having. Uh, we have a few things that you can get some um, resources with regards to, you know, scanning um, uh, the, the QR code. You can get access to some of the OCI um, information as well as some of the data sheets and so on. We do run um, a little um, reward scheme with regards to if you can come in and, and finish the survey. We give you some uh, some nice T-shirts or, or mugs, um, and then um, if you ever I don't know want to reach out to have or have any more questions, feel free to you know connect with me, and I will gladly do so. Thank you.